It's the end of an era. We knew it was coming to a close on Sunday, the final game for Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. It ends in a loss to South Carolina. We break down the game, talk about the legacy of Caitlin Clark and this group of Hawkeyes, all today, Locked on Hawkeyes. You are Locked on Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts, and you also find us on YouTube while you're there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, we knew it was coming to a close on Sunday afternoon. The final game of the career of Caitlin Clark, Gabby Marshall, Kate Martin, Sharon Goodman, Molly Davis all came to a close in the national championship game. Iowa made it as far as you possibly can for the second consecutive year. Unfortunately, it ended in another loss. This one, definitely a stinger as we break things down. And we got a lot of big picture things we're going to talk about. The legacy that Caitlin Clark leaves behind. A look to, towards the future of what Iowa basketball is going to look like on the women's side next season. And we will get into all of that here throughout the program today. But first, a look back at the game. And we kick it off in the first quarter where Iowa jumps out to a 10-0 lead. First seven points of the game come from players outside of Caitlin Clark, and then she starts to catch fire as she puts up 18 points, 18 of the next 20 points for Iowa as they race out to a 27-20 lead. But you now they're up 20-9 to at one point there in the first quarter. Everything is going well. You could see that South Carolina was a little bit shell-shocked, I think, by the speed that Iowa was playing at. But they settled in, and ultimately, really the biggest thing is South Carolina was just a lot better. I mean, it was just a more talented team, top to bottom, than this Iowa team. And it doesn't discredit Caitlin Clark. It doesn't discredit this Iowa team and this Iowa program. You know, I, I look at it this way. And, you know, as you think back and you think of some of the great college teams, and when we hearken back to some of the greats, I mean, one of my favorite teams growing up was Loyola Marymount. Their run ended in the Elite Eight. I think back of the Fab Five and what, obviously, they were able to do with Chris Weber and Jalen Rose and that group and, and the Fab Five and what Michigan was uh, during the early 90s. And you think back of those great teams, well, they didn't have national championships. And though that will be a part of the legacy, that will be ammunition for the haters out there. And that's something we'll talk about later, the just absolute negativity surrounding Caitlin Clark, one of the most baffling things that I've ever seen. But that aside. We will remember this team for greatness. We will remember this team for changing college basketball for the better. And what they've done for the women's college basketball game is something that can't be overstated. The attendance numbers, the viewership numbers, just absolutely something that has never been seen before, certainly in my lifetime. As I embark on my 44th time around this planet, I haven't seen anything like this. You know, people talk about the Tiger Woods effect and what that was. The Masters was still getting between 7 and 10 million viewers on Sunday each and every year. It went up to 14 on Tiger's first victory, and the numbers increased, but not at this level. We've seen nothing like this. Katie Ledecky, Michael Phelps, individual talents in individual sports and what they were able to do. We've seen increases, but nothing like this. Nothing for a sport that has been around as long as it has in women's college basketball going on at least sanctioned in the NCAA since 1982. We have not seen growth like this ever in any sport. You cannot find anything that has this kind of improvements on a year-by-year -year basis. It's the Caitlin Clark effect. It's the Iowa basketball brand effect and what they were able to do. And the way they played the game and the way that Caitlin played the game, she is one of one. Call her the GOAT. Come up with the arguments that aren't there. Do whatever you want but we were able to witness greatness. That first quarter, we'll remember that one for a long time, but you could see the cracks starting to form as Cardosa started to get going, the offensive put back, just the sheer size of the South Carolina team. A year ago, Iowa was able to combat that, 
by laying off shooters. Not the case in this one. And yet with all that being said, Iowa goes into the game in the final five minutes in a five-point game. A couple of chances. And two of the most back-breaking plays. In fact, there are three that really stand out. One is when they went to O'Grady in the high post, and she fumbled it away, led to a turnover. Another, Sydney Falter. And every day, as you know, that I have, uh, I really like Sydney Falter. I, I think she has a chance to be a star. I love her t- toughness and tenacity. I just love the way that she plays the game. I believe that if she was not inserted in the starting lineup, I don't think Iowa gets here without Sydney Falter. But she made a mistake. Try to beat the team up the floor, play the team that athletic, that fast. But you got to poke, poke from behind. And then the travel call on Kate Martin as she got the ball in the post and got called for steps there. I mean, three different opportunities when it was that time. It was winning time. And they're all plays that unfortunately didn't go Iowa's way. Maybe, unfortunately, Kate and Clark didn't have the ball in her hands in those situations. Look, the defense was outstanding for South Carolina. Uh, what they did in really going back and forth. Raven Johnson was out there a ton guarding her one-on-one. We also saw Hall I'll get the assignment for a while. They used a ton of different defenders. They threw a lot of bodies and a lot of great athletes. And that's what Caitlin Clark's going to continue to see as she makes her way to the professional level. There's going to be uh, players that are going to be ready for her, and she's going to te- see a ton of that. But that changed the complexion of this game. They took away so many, so many of the things, excuse me, where Caitlin Clark normally makes those plays, and they just weren't there. And they weren't there. Not because she had a bad night. She didn't, you can't point and just say it was terrible, things like that. You got to give credit to South Carolina. This is a team with seven McDonald's All Americans. This is a team off the bench that's bringing in McDonald's All Americans. And you see what Tessa Johnson was able to do and what she came in and full Wiley. I mean, those kind of players and those kind of athletes coming in, Iowa can't compete with that. And yet they had a chance, and yet they had an opportunity to get it done. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be second guessing. We think back to the LSU game and if that first half just went different in the national championship game a year ago, if you didn't have a player that had come in shooting just terribly, hit seven three-pointers and a half, there's a lot of what-ifs. The what-ifs here are still there. They're going to linger. There's going to be those thoughts. But we got to see this team play the maximum number of games this year. We got to enjoy this squad throughout the whole course of the season, for everything that it was. Expectations, as they should have been, are through the roof. Coming into the year, I thought they were too high. With the loss of Monica Sonato, with the loss of Warnock, I didn't think this team could get here. And they did. And they're to be celebrated. They're to be championed. And though they don't have a shiny trophy, Lisa Bluter, if you saw the post game and you saw the locker room and what she said, it was perfect. It was perfect for this team. It was perfect for this program. And it was perfect for a once in a generation player in Caitlin Clark. She has lifted this sport to a level unseen before. We're going to talk a little bit more about her legacy. We're going to talk about Caitlin Clark and what she has done, not just for Iowa, not for Iowa City, not for college basketball. A whole lot more. Caitlin Clark, we got to enjoy her in our state. Hawkeye fans, we got to see her. Absolutely incredible. We'll talk more about that as we continue here. Locked on Hawkeyes continues as we break things down and talk a little bit more about Caitlin Clark. Today's episode of Locked on Hawkeyes is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. How about this? Win or lose. I'm a longtime better, and when I see something like that, you say, whew, that sounds absolutely incredible, and it is with FanDuel Sportsbook. $150, win or lose. Bet on everything. Slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all in an app that's safe, secure, and it's super easy to use. One of my favorite sportsbook apps, I use it each and every day, Open it up a wide menu from same game parlays. They got you covered there. You want to bet on individual games, a future market that is deep and comprehensive. It's anything you're going to find in the market. So what are you waiting for? 
Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Trent Cotton back with you once again here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. As always, thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. So as you can tell, uh, there had a little cough, little hiccup in there. And uh, apologies for that. A little late getting this out. We've just been battling. Battling a little bit of a cold. Got it from the little man uh, here at home. And uh, yeah, we're, we're battling. We're making our way through. So apologies if there's another a pause in there that you weren't expecting or a little bit of cough. Uh, we'll try to at least get that out of there and and bring the microphone down if another cough comes up. But we're going to battle through here because this team deserves it. And uh, we deserve it. And it's so enjoyable to talk about this team. And that's really another angle I want to go with you. It's just the enjoyment that we got out of Caitlin Clark in this Iowa basketball program. You know, I have been a longtime champion of women's basketball, somebody that has celebrated the sport, love to talk about it, bring it up. Um, I'm a full-time job as a radio show host in Des Moines on KXNO, man, the 11 to 1 shift over uh, the lunch hour. And my partner, Ken Miller, known Ken for a long time, done radio with him now for a number of years, and enjoy our conversations. But he was somebody that, when I bring up certain things, eyes would roll back in the back of his head. One of them was, in general, women's athletics. There are a few things from time to time that would get him, but women's basketball was basically a non starter. Talking about a guy in the 60s, a Canadian. And though he's learned to love college sports, living in Iowa for uh, nearly 40 years, that was something that was difficult, difficult to get. And Caitlin Clark got him, got her hooks into him, and made him as big of a basketball fan, a women's college basketball fan as I've seen. And it wasn't just watching Caitlin Clark in Iowa. It was watching Iowa State. It was watching other games and watching LSU and South Carolina. And and that is somebody that I thought would never be able to happen. And yet it did. And he's not alone. For the people new to the sport, for the people that have a chance now to elevate this program, that's first on the Iowa angle, what Caitlin Clark has been able to do. You look at the recruiting, and there's certainly an uptick that is happening there. And you look towards the future. You look at the possibility of Addie Deal coming in another season and potentially Madden Greenway from up in Minnesota and on and on and on. Now, is Iowa going to have the same kind of volume as a UConn, of a South Carolina, of an LSU, the dearth and depth of talent that those programs have? I don't know how realistic that is, but they can get close. And what we've seen in the acumen of Lisa Bluter and Jan Jensen a Raina Harmon, an Abby Stamp, Coach Fitz, and everybody involved in that basketball program. What they do X's and O's wise is elite. The way they teach offense, the way that Jan Jensen coaches the post players, with what we see, and coupled with an ability to connect in a real way. They're great teams. They're teams that make incredible runs. But there was something special about the the way this team was just easy to root for. And it wasn't just about Caitlin Clark. And you go around Carver Hawkeye Arena, and yes, you're going to see a lot of 22 jerseys. And my daughter's got one, and she's got a t-shirt, and she's got the jersey. She wants more and more. And she's ready for an Indiana Fever one. And she'll get that too. A little man, he's four. He's got a Caitlin Clark. And that's what he's talking about, is Caitlin Clark. But you look around Carver, it's not just 22s. It's happy like Hannah. It's the glue, Kate Martin. The grit of Gabby. That's what we've been able to see. And she built this program. Caitlin Clark lifted this program to a level where, yes, she's a star. But everybody else was lifted with her. And that was something coming out of high school I didn't know if she was going to be able to do. There was no doubt that Caitlin Clark was going to be an incredible basketball player. And she was going to put up monster numbers at the collegiate level. There was never a doubt about that. But could she be a big-time winner? She wasn't in high school. Even with all that talent, she wasn't able to do it at the high school level. She was able to do it here. 
leading Iowa to back-to-back national championship games is more impressive to me than Brianna Stewart winning four titles in a row with UConn. Because look at what she had around her. Look at the sport. The sport today is in a lot better spot and a lot deeper than it was even in that short era, not too long ago. It's in a different spot, and she was able to do that at Iowa. With what other top 40 player? I mean, Hannah Stolke is the only other player that didn't even get a whiff from these programs that we're talking about. One player. And Caitlin Clark was able to do that. But when you talk about Caitlin Clark, it's not what she did for basketball in this state. It's not what she did for the University of Iowa. And those things are immeasurable. The positive publicity that she brought for our school, for our state, for the team that we root for, there is no way that Darren Ravel could put a figure on it that will equate to what it really was. But what we do know is she's amazing. And we got to witness it. We're all witnesses to greatness. And the legacy of Caitlin Clark go so much deeper than that. Not inside of our state borders, but looking around the country, looking at the sold-out gyms in Madison, where they average 4,000 fans a game, and they put 15,000 in the building, and Maryland, a sold-out Rutgers, Nebraska, Minnesota, on and on and on, everywhere that she went, the Pied Piper of women's college basketball is Caitlin Clark. And to elevate a sport at the level that it is, And the numbers on the TV. The biggest star. The biggest star in college athletics is Caitlin Clark. Not Zach Eady. Not Tristan Newton. No. It was Caitlin Clark. For our Hawkeyes. And the future of college basketball. On the women's side. Looks to be a rising star. Now are the attendance figures going to go down? Sure. Are we going to see the same TV numbers that we saw this season? It's unlikely. But she has elevated the sport in a way that is unthinkable. As somebody that has loved watching women's college basketball for a long time, never thought it would be at this point. 23 million viewers? 24 million viewers at a peak for a women's college basketball game? Come on. There's no way. And here we are. We got to do it with a homegrown star. That's somebody that grew up not too far away from where I am here in West Des Moines. One of ours. We're very lucky. And the conversations that I've been able to have about the sport, the joy that I've been able to bring my family, going last year to the Final Four, being able to have a trip with just me and my daughter and to see that. And to show her that everything, anything is possible. That these kind of things can happen. And to see the smiles and see the the kids that get the autograph or even just get a wave at what that means. It happened here. We got to see it here. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm grateful for it. And I think many of you are as well. Well, we mentioned the future. And the future here and now and the future going forward. We'll talk about that as we continue. The next step for Iowa women's basketball. What is it going to look like? What is the future of the women's team? And what Lisa Bluter and company need to do to keep this ship rolling along? We'll talk about that as we continue. This is Locked on Hawkeyes. Trent Condon back with you one final time on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. So we got football coming up. We're going to talk plenty of spring football. Yes, it is finally time uh, to get into that. Crazy as we're into the second week of April and we're, we're still not getting into spring football very deep. What's the Iowa men's basketball roster going to look like? Iowa baseball, a disappointing uh, series loss against Michigan over the weekend. They got a lot of work to do to put themselves back in consideration, be an NCAA tournament team. Softball has been pretty good and uh, showing signs of improvement. It's taken a while, but 
definitely getting there with a lot of young talent. And we'll have plenty of that coming up here in the coming days and weeks on Locked On Hawkeyes. Of course, the NFL draft around the corner. Cooper DeGene, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, more on tomorrow's program as he had a monster performance at his pro day. And great to see certainly Cooper DeGene uh, show it up after coming off the injury that he sustained in practice back in November. Practice in some offense. And we never got to see him outside of uh, just a couple plays against Northwestern at Wrigley Field. But that aside, what's next for Iowa basketball on the women's side of things? So we see Caitlin Clark is moving on and she'll be next week the number one pick by the Indiana Fever. Kate Martin, will she get a shot at the WNBA? Maybe a shot, but I mean, we saw Monica Sonata, who was an incredible talent at the collegiate level. Then it was a cup of coffee and that was it. And she was out of the league very, very quickly. We've seen Megan Gustafson, a first-team All-American, struggle to stay on WNBA rosters. There's only 12 teams. There's only 12 roster spots. There's only 144 spots. And as good as Kate Martin is and has been, if she is able to find a role and be incredible, but for her, it's about her future and her future following in her aunt's footsteps and becoming a coach. And for everybody that knows Kate Martin, they say she's going to be an incredible coach. In fact, maybe she is the next head coach after Lisa Bluter retires at the University of Iowa. Got work to do, but just something to put out there. Gabby Marshall moving on, going to start grad school at North Carolina. Molly Davis's career comes to an end. How about getting Molly out there for the final seconds of the game and her limping around? Boy, you just feel absolutely terrible for her. And Sharon Goodman. And talking about good people, boy. Uh, try to find somebody with a negative thing to say about Sharon Goodman. Uh, you're going to be hard-pressed. And you could spend a whole day in Iowa City. And I don't think you're going to find one person with anything negative to say about her. So they're gone. And now it's about the next group. You start with Hannah Stolke. And we saw the incredible tournament that she had, the Final Four that she had, playing against bigger players. She is incredibly athletic. She was playing out of position. She's playing the center position as a power forward. And you do wonder what that's going to look like next season. You know, if you look through and you kind of look at what Iowa basketball is going to be next season, what do they revert to? Now, what is this team going to be? We know offensively they're going to be good, right? Next season, they are going to be built around, I think, definitely Stolke. Sydney Fulter. Taylor McCabe is one that I think is incredibly interesting. We know she is an elite shooter. An elite shooter. Not just a good one. An elite shooter. Is she good enough on the defensive end, though, to be able to play 25, 30 minutes a game? Don't know. What are you going to do at the point guard position? Ava Hyden comes in. So she's the top-rated player in the class. Top 40 player, center. But we know developmentally, now, the center position is one that you're not many ready made most of the time. The freshman coming in and playing that position in women's college basketball, it takes a long time. It really does. And because of that, you're left wondering how much impact is she going to be able to make right away? Aliyah Guyton was the apparent it felt like at the point guard position. We saw Johnson this year, and she had an injury in practice, and she had a torn ACL. Well, same thing happened to Guyton here a couple of months ago. What does that mean? There's a lot of buzz out there that Iowa is targeting somebody in the transfer portal, something that maybe has already been in the works. Uh, in fact, I saw just today, point guard from Villanova, who put up huge numbers a year ago, over 20 points, four rebounds, four assists a game. She's in the portal. Whoever it is, though, I don't think there's any doubt. Iowa needs a point guard for next season. Because of the injury to Guyton, the injury to Johnson, I think that is number one. You have to get into the portal, and you have to be able to bring somebody in. A lot of shots, a lot of opportunity on uh, next season. Stolke, a Fulter, McCabe, I think those are pretty good starting points when you're talking about the squad next year. Uh, another one that's interesting is Addison O'Grady. You know, O'Grady, I thought was going to be a starter this year. I know I wasn't alone in that front. We saw glimpses. We saw how well she played against LSU. She battled inside a couple of times against South Carolina. I think it's there. I think she can get there. Got to put in the work, though. 
have to be able to be more consistent. That's something Lisa Bluter mentioned throughout the course of the season is the post players getting that consistency back. Kyler Fierbach at times looked overwhelmed. Got to tighten up the handles. We know she can knock down a shot. She has the athleticism to be a good defender. I definitely think that is a part of her game and something that can be there. Just has to be better. And that's what you need to see out of Fierbach to be a piece. And then can they get anything out of the players that have been around? You know, A.J. Edinger was a good recruit coming in. We've seen her for a few moments. Can she be even a developmental 8-10 to 10 minute player? Give him something off the bench like that. Do you get anything out of Jada Jimphy? She was a good recruit herself coming out of Johnston High School. Now, is there anything more, another post player, that can help out? And the rest of the freshman class, honestly, I don't know a ton about. Uh, Tegan Malingi from up in Wisconsin, pretty good recruit, top 100 player. A possibility there. I have a girl from Solon, saw her a couple of times at the high school level, liked her game, 11. Got some work to do, though, and we'll see athletically if she's going to be able to keep up. And then Stremlo, another one from up in Wisconsin. So, again, those last two, the two Wisconsin girls, I don't know a ton about and kind of how they equate. We'll do some more digging, though. We'll talk to some people. I know a few people in the grassroots circuit that I'll talk to and get a little bit more about them uh, going forward. But that's what's coming in. And I think the portal needs to be active because here's the thing about the future of Iowa women's basketball. We mentioned Addie Deal, a top 15 player nationally. That's uh, set for the class of 2025. Greenway, yes, Chad Greenway's daughter up in Minnesota. They're in a lot of big-time targets in the class of 2025 and 2026. But you have to keep the momentum going. You can't take a huge step back next season. Yep, minimum five can be fringe top 25 team next year, make the tournament, get it, even win a game or two, get to a Sweet 16. That would be immaculate if you can do something like that. But I think looking at the roster right now, work needs to be done in the portal in order for that to make it happen. You want to keep this momentum going. I believe in Bluter and Jensen and the whole crew with this Iowa women's basketball program. I think they're set up to make another run. But you got to get players. And that's the end game here. They're in good shape. Recruiting's going well. Now, keep that momentum going. We'll keep it going here all week long on Locked On Hawkeyes. As always, thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every single day. Hey, also want to let you know, uh, you know, you're watching ESPN all day. You got FS1 on your TV. And do you just have to turn down the volume from all that shouting, the screaming, the back and forth? Well, it's time for you to make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you. Every day, it's going to bring you the biggest stories with all, without all that screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, or you can find it on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We got you covered every day here on the Hawkeye front as we battle our way through. We'll get healthy, we'll be right, and we'll be talking Hawkeyes with you. Football, men's basketball, little baseball, little softball, a little bit of everything. We got you covered coming up this week. Going to talk some football recruiting uh, coming up a little bit later on and uh, take a look at the incoming freshmen as well as the class of 2025 as they look towards the future of Iowa football. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.